shut up, okay? Welcome back to the Jersey Sharacle. I transcend dimensions, I speak to spirits, I live off exit nine up the turnpike. So, today I have been summoned to the home of an adorable little boy and his adult friend who he barely knows. My name is Stuart and I'm 12 years old. I'd say I'm a pretty happy kid. That is, until it showed up. Its name is Adam and he's making Halloween really not scary. So I'm hoping the Jersey Shore girl can connect me with a dead relative. Or a murderer. Whichever is more terrifying. Hello. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. I sensed you needed it. Good. You sat down. OK. We're going to start this. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Now, before we start, I do have a couple of questions, OK? I need you to tell me. That mediums are scammers who prey on your grief for money? What is this? It's in my contract. No one can have bigger hair than me. Adam, she's going to contact the dead for me. It's an age-old tradition. It sure is. A tradition of faking it and ripping people off. Seances first became popular in America during the 19th century, when three young ladies named the Fox Sisters started charging admission to watch them communicate with the dead. If there be any ghosts in this room, may they knock. And if those ghosts think people should give us money, also knock. As they grew up, the Fox sisters became bona fide celebrities, touring and holding packed sessions multiple times a day. Sorry, darling, we couldn't possibly fit you in. We're talking to Shakespeare and Attila the Hun at noon. But later in life, Maggie Fox spilled the beans and revealed how they tricked their public, making knocking sounds using an apple on a string and writing secret messages with their feet. I feel the spirit. Wait for it. Despite Maggie's confession, the spiritualism movement continued to this day, and modern mediums still make bank. Famous mediums even have best-selling books and hit TV shows. Yes, TV shows that are totally real. That's right, the higher the hair, the closer to heaven. OK, enough chit-chat. Let's start this reading. Oh, yeah, I'm feeling something very powerful. Oh, yeah, it's a presence. Did you lose someone with a J name, like a John, a Jack, a Julio? Yes, my grandpa's name was Jason. Bam, that's it. OK. Oh, 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 I'm feeling the pain. Oh, yeah, in my chestal area. Is there any type of thing that happened in that region area? Yes. He, he died of lung cancer. Bada bingo! What you think about that, Mr. Everything, huh? OK, so your grandfather's telling me, oh, something about a book. Why? Why? Uh, I think he owned a book. And I saw it once. That's it? That's it? He wants me to tell you he cherishes those moments and he loves you. Boom, shut up, I'm done. That was amazing. How do you explain that? Simple. She was doing a cold reading. Uh, who this? You're not a spirit. I did not summon you. OK, can we cut? This is Mark Edward. He's a magician who went undercover as a psychic medium to research how they scam people. I used to do everything she does for a living, and I can tell you exactly how it's done. Cold reading is a series of questions and statements that mine you for information without you even knowing it. First, the medium lists common names to guess at a match. And they start with just the initials so that you fill in the blank. Oh, yeah. I know tons of people with J names. And lots of them are dead. Mediums then offer details which sound specific, but are actually quite generic. Chest pains could be lung cancer, heart disease, or really anything. No, no, I sense that he died because of something in the chest or the head. Huh? Definitely someone in the body. Finally, she offered a question phrased like a statement to make you do the work and make a connection. Honey, sugar, the book, it was real, right? Actually, no. Grandpa hated books. Now that I'm thinking of it, I was thinking of his TV guide. By using questions that could apply to anyone and judging your body language to see how you respond, mediums manipulate you into thinking they know things nobody else could know. And since they often work in group settings, if they don't get it right, they just move on to someone else in the room. I mean, how about your haircut? You know something about a book? No, somebody here must know something about a book. Ugh, why did I ever buy this? 
Well, cold reading often seems supernatural because it's a truly amazing skill, but that's all it is, a really good magic trick. And while there's nothing wrong with a little illusion, it is straight up unethical to take advantage of other people's grief for your own gain. I've even seen people lose their entire savings because a medium convinced them to hand it over. You scammer! How do you even sleep at night? Okay, calm down. Everyone just take a minute, close your eyes, okay, and just imagine smoke or whatever. Poof, I'm gone! It's time for me to go to... Just kidding, it's an editing trick.